Hi, and welcome back. Um, if you haven't seen one of these seminars before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, I'm an I'm a, a elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. I do nothing but elder law. I can do that because there are 70 of us at Myrick. There are lawyers who do kind of everything. So um, what I have always focused on, though, is uh, talking about senior issues through the eyes of my friends, Frank and Mary. Today's presentation is about staying at home because Frank and Mary uh, whom you've probably met before. We talk about them a lot and today they're, they are, Frank and me are 70. They're a little younger than usual because this is a planning uh, session and they've got three kids, Peter, Paul and Mary Jr. and their goal in life is to, hasn't changed, is to live in their house until they die and then be buried in the backyard. And this presentation is extremely relevant to them because the question is then, how can they be planning so that they can do exactly that? How can they be planning to stay home? The first question being, if they want to stay in their house, how can they make sure that their house is going to remain safe enough so that they can stay home? Because if it becomes unsafe and one of them falls and goes to the hospital, you know, you know where this goes. It just isn't good. So, so if you're planning on staying home, you've got to make sure that your house is safe. The other piece of that is you, gotta, you, you need to be planning to make sure that if you need some care staying home, and you're getting to the age you're both, Frank and Mary, get both getting old at the same time, you know? And so they, they, they really may, they may not be able to just take care of themselves. So is there a way that they can provide for some additional care to help out? So um, many, many of my clients, when we kind of talk about this, will say, oh, it's all going to work out. Well, you know, hope is not a plan. Hope is not a plan. Um, it may all work out. And it may work out even if you don't plan, right? But I'll guarantee you the chances are better that it's going to work out if you do plan. So this is about kind of thinking out the way in which you can do that plan. And, and, and so to give you a sense, once again, of Frank and Mary's situation, they own their home, doesn't have a mortgage right now, it's worth about $400,000. Obviously that varies a lot. Uh, one of the, the, some of the, for the presentations, the people who are watching on Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard, they think this is of course a joke number because the, very, the numbers are, are very different. But all of the concepts that we're talking about here are the same. Um, so they've got this house and it doesn't have a mortgage and they have some savings, about $200,000. And then Frank's got an IRA of $200,000. So they're not like in great shape, but they're okay. And, and as long as things are steady, they're fine. Frank's getting $2,000 a month in Social Security and Mary's getting half of his or $1,000 a month. So they got $3,000 a month and $36,000 a year. Um, and as long as nothing bad happens medically, they're okay. But the question is, if they're anticipating or worried about what might happen in the future, how do they think that out? Well, the first thing you ought to do when you're trying to think this out is go talk to somebody who focuses on these issues. And the three best places to, 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 to start are with professionals because you need somebody who can really talk to you about how to make the house safe, how to make the house affordable, and how to make sure that you get adequate home care. So the first place that you need to go is the senior center. That's you know, kind of what the senior center does. You know? That's what the folks there do. They're talking all the time to seniors about issues facing seniors. And so I guarantee you, just about every one of your issues, somebody there has already seen before. So they, they, are, they are, are going to be helpful just in and of themselves, but they're also going to know kind of who else is around. Among other things, they're going to be connect, able to connect you directly to your ASAP, the Aging Services Access Point that is in your area. For, for the folks where I uh, am working, there are, there are two major ASAPs here uh, around my home in Marlboro. It's um, Bay Path Elder Services, which covers all of the communities in this area. Uh, for the folks on Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard, uh, it's Elder Services or Cape Cod in the Islands. But in either case, they're going to be really able to tell you about most of the government programs that are available to help you. And once again, you're not just thinking now about nursing homes. You're specifically not thinking about nursing homes. You're thinking about home. And so they may have a number of programs or people they can recommend to you. Finally, if, if there's somebody around, you really need to talk to a geriatric care manager. Uh, there is, a, there is a, some wonderful folks. There's some wonderful folks here uh, in the Marlboro area and on Martha's Vineyard and on Nantucket who, can help, who are dealing with these issues all the time 
and can help you think them out. Some of those folks are going to charge you for that service, but it's going to be cheap compared to what you're getting. So get some advice. First, think about how can you make the house safe? Well, in order to do that, you may want to look to talk, actually talk to somebody who is in the business of figuring out how to make the house safe for seniors and kind of doing those repairs. There's a wonderful woman uh, um, in Northbrook, Carol DiRienzo, who's been doing that for many years. You may be able to connect with some others. Uh, and once again, the people who would know that would probably be the people at the senior center. Um, but, but when you're thinking about how to make the house safe, don't, once again, one of the reasons why you need to have a professional is so that you can see, you can think about what may be a hazard to, to seniors, as you, to, to you as you get older, and also what's available. You may have very little idea of what's available. I, I, I mentioned that right off the top because I talk about home elevators. I remember talking to people and thinking to myself 15 years ago, a home elevator? Forget it. It's going to look stupid. It's going to cost a tremendous amount of money. Well, all, first, you know, th those prices have gone way down. And, and the architecture of them to blend them into the house has really improved. My, my wife and I were visiting. We have a daughter out who lives in D.C. The other in-laws are in Maryland. We went to see them in their standard issue four-bedroom colonial in which they have now ex installed an elevator the effect of which is to make their second floor, where all the bedrooms are, useful again for these folks who, are, who, who the, the, uh, the, uh, the wife re ha really has some kind of medical, some, some problems getting around. And suddenly, their house is useful again. So there's elevators, there's grab bars, there's lighting that you can do. There are appliances that are, that are especially designed to help people who are getting older, who might not be, be able to you know, reach up or, 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 or get around easily. There are just a bunch of things you can do to your home. You want to try to figure that out. Now, then, once you figure that out, it's not that you need to be do figuring it out so that you can spend the money on them right now, but you want to get an order of magnitude of what they might cost. If you want to buy them now, that's great. But, so, for example, that elevator may cost you $40,000. It may cost you more than that, but I'm telling you, it's not like a crazy expensive thing anymore. So anyway, there's the elevator. There's the chair lift that you may want to do instead of an elevator or in addition to an elevator. There's the ramp that you might want to put you know, outside. There are grab bars. So there are things specifically meant to, to adapt your home as you get older. And then there are the things that you need to put money aside for because the house is a house. And there are certain things about having a house that sometimes cause big expenses, like the roof. If you're looking, about, looking to stay in your house for the next 10 years and you, haven't, and you haven't fixed the roof for the previous 10 or 20 years, there's a reasonable chance you're going to have a problem. So you need to figure that out. The furnace. Furnaces and hot water heaters, these things you know, only carry a warranty of like 5 to 10 years. So if, once again, if you're thinking long term that you really want to stay in the house, you want to make sure that you've, you have, at, will have the access to the funds to take care of those things. And then I just threw them in a miscellaneous item. There were a million other possible things that you might need. Some of those things are going to get recommended to you by the folks that I was talking to you about. So add them all up. So in this particular case, all of that adds up to $100,000. So now you've, you've figured out what you kind of need in order to make sure you're going to be okay in your house for we're going to talk about, say, the next 10, 10 to 15 years. So then the question is, during those 10 to 15 years, the house is going to get older, but guess what? So are you. So are you. And if you're Frank and Mary, you know, and you're 70, that means you're thinking about, what am I going to be feeling like when I'm 85? Now, it may be that you're going to be feeling great, and you probably know people who are 85 who are feeling great, but not everybody you know who is 85 is feeling so great, right? And so you, you want, once again, you want to make sure that you've kind of figured this piece out, right? Now, many people will tell me, I don't have to worry about this. My kids are going to take care of this. This used to be more common 15 years ago, right? Every year, though, there were more people with more kids who live farther away. And so even, even for people who are thinking that their kids are going to have the time to do this, it's now getting to be physically impossible. But even if the kids are close, you know, I, I know a lot of, 
I know a lot of burned out kids. I know a lot of burned out kids, right? Who, have been, who are dealing with this kind of stuff. And if you're, if you're thinking, I'm going to be 85, and I've got this terrific daughter, she's my oldest daughter, she was always, you know, great to me, and, you know, she was our first child, so she's actually now, in, she's going to be 65 when you're 85, right? And so, and, then, and she may have her own issues. She may have kids. She may be, she may be a grandmother. She may be taking care of kids. There are, there are it is unfair of you to be simply thinking that your kids are really going to be able to fill in this gap. You just can't count on that. Hope is not a plan. Hope is not a plan. You need to be making sure that if you need to, you can take care of yourselves so that, so that this, this need for care doesn't end up also causing this tremendous tension between you and your kids over who's going to take care of the care. So, it would probably be handy for you at this point, you're 70, estimate what the cost of this care may be. Not that you need the care now, but what you, what you want to make sure of is that you're not worried about this and that you're not in the back of your mind constantly saying, oh, I really can't afford to get any care. You know, it's, I'm going to go broke, right? So let's think this out a little bit. So when you're thinking about the cost of care, forget about thinking about 24-7 care. It's just tremendously expensive, unless it's for a very short period of time. And here's the estimate, right? So care around, uh, actually in both places, kind of the, the, the best deal that you're going to get on care is about $25 an hour, right? There are 8,760 hours in a year. So 24-7 care would cost you $219,000. You're just not, if you're Frank and Mary, you're not going there. Nor, if you need that much care, do you really probably still want to be at home? But, you know, that's kind of a different question. The point is you will not have the resources to take care of that. But you may very well have the resources to take care of what you need to stay at home help with dressing, toileting, showers, meal prep. How many hours a day does it take to do those things? Let's estimate that that's four hours a day. You don't, you don't need someone 24 seven, but say four hours a day to come in and help you out, like in the mornings to get ready and, and maybe help you with breakfast or they're, maybe they're gonna leave you with a, with a lunch and maybe come back for dinner. So there, think about it in those terms. So say it's four hours times $25 an hour times 365 days, right, is $36,500. This is not, it's a big expense. And remember, Mary, Frank and Mary's income put together is only $36,000 a, a year. So it's not going to work on their current income. But the point is, it may be doable. So assume that you're going to need that level of care for five years. Uh, and therefore, that you're going to need a total of $182,500 in order to maintain you at home for five years. Because at the end of that five years, you may be, it may not be possible for you to stay at home. To be honest, you may have died. You know, I hate to say that, but that's, we all appreciate the fact we're seniors. I'm gonna be 72 this month, actually, uh, in, in January of 2022. So it, it, I get it. You know, you're kind of looking forward to, you know, your goal is to live as well as you can until you die not to live forever. So assume that you need five years worth of um, care, so there's $182,500. So forget trying to provide for care 24-7. It, it's just too expensive. The, the, the cost of care, um, the, kind of the best that you're going to do, I think, around is about $25 an hour. There are 8,760 hours in a year. At $25 an hour, that's $219,000 a year. So if you're at the level of if you're at the level of health where you need 24-hour care, you probably can't get it at home. Um, but chances are, if you're simply getting more frail, you just need a little help. Typically, a little help means a little help getting up in the morning, a little help making meals, uh, a little help with with the with the shower, uh, you know, some going to get the groceries, some other stuff, right? If that's what you need, that's probably more like four hours a day. It's help in the morning, someone's coming in, helping with breakfast, leaving a, a sandwich for lunch, coming back for dinner, maybe helping when you're going to bed, taking a shower. So 
if, if that's what you need, say four hours, at, four hours a day times 25 is $100 times 365 days is $36,500. This is not an impossible number. It's, it's obviously not what Frank and Mary can afford on their regular incomes because they're only making, as I mentioned early, earlier, $36,000 a year, right? But it, is, but it is not a crazy number. So, uh, and say they needed that care for five years, that means their total cost would be $182,500, right? So, the cost of maintaining the house, or the estimated cost of maintaining the house was $100,000. The cost of this care is $182,500. So, if they're looking toward how do we make sure that we're gonna be able to stay home, figure what they're gonna need as a reserve is $282,500. So what have they got? They've got $400,000 in reserve. They own their home and they have another $400,000. So the question would then be, um, if they're thinking to themselves, well, you know, you know, we wanna make sure that we've prepared for, these, for, for, for our frailty, but also we need some kind of reserve. Is this gonna make them lose sleep? Is this already making you lose sleep if you're thinking, if you've already, because you're playing with these numbers as you get older all the time, right? You're always thinking about these in your head, oh, how's this gonna work out? So the question is then, how do you deal with that? Well, the, 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 I think, and the main way to do it, if you're planning on living at home, is to use your home. The great unused resource here uh, is the equity in your home. So the question is, how do you use your home to stay at home? Uh, we're gonna talk in, in a little bit of detail about HELOCs, home equity lines of credit. I'm also gonna talk about reverse mortgages, but always remember that there is also a, an, a, an available, depending on your community, a, the availability of tax deferral. It may very well be, or I, I pretty much guarantee if you're Frank and Mary, that your biggest bill, uh, other than food, is your real estate taxes. And there is a state law uh, that authorizes and actually requires communities on certain terms to al allow you to defer all of those taxes until you die, to basically give you a reverse mortgage regarding your taxes. So you should really talk to your uh, assessor uh, if you're interested in that program, that can be a really big help. But put that, putting that aside, the two ways that people traditionally think about deal, dealing with tapping into their equity are through a home equity line of credit or a HELOC or reverse mortgage. So we're gonna talk about both of them because they're both actually very similar. So a home equity line of credit is basically a, a, a credit card that the bank gives you uh, and says here's the amount that you can borrow against your credit card uh, and you're gonna need to repay that and we're gonna secure that repayment by taking a mortgage on your house. And typically, like a credit card, uh, you're not being charged any, anything if you're, you haven't borrowed the money. You're only being borrow, uh, charged on the money that you're borrowing. And then, once you've borrowed some, you're being charged interest. Right now, that's probably gonna be about 3%, although that interest is gonna vary. Uh, the, those, these are typically all variable rate uh, um, um, loans. Uh, but the thing about those loans, and, and, you, and you may very well wanna just go to your bank and see if you're eligible for one of those loans. There's no harm in asking. You should be aware though, that when, these lo when you owe money on these loans, there is a monthly payment that has to be made. And therefore, if the bank is evaluating whether you're eligible for one of these loans, they're gonna look at your income, that $36,000 a month, and they're gonna say, so, if the, if the line of credit were used, if the total amount of the line of credit were used, would these folks have the ability to make that monthly payment, right? And that may be difficult for you if you're Frank and Mary, given what your income is. The other thing about these home, the, the HELOCs is that typically they're interest only for a period of time, usually between five and 10 years, at which point they convert into a regular mortgage on which interest and principal need to be paid. And when the bank is evaluating whether or not you're eligible for that loan, they need to figure out whether you'd be eligible, whether you'd have the ability to pay that payment, that larger payment. So you wanna see if this is available, but those are kind of the concerns and they're gonna cause this cash flow issue. If you've borrowed a lot of the money, the amount you're gonna to need to pay every month is going to be a lot. The alternative is a reverse mortgage. A reverse mortgage in many ways is exactly like a, a, a HELOC. 
uh, in that you're basically being given a credit card and told whatever you borrow, uh, interest is going to be charged. Typically at about that same kind of rate, about 3% now, it's going to, but, it, but it, you know, the, it's variable, so it may be going up over the next few years. Um, but the, the, the key to the, to the reverse mortgage is that while there is a large kind of upfront payment that needs to be paid, uh, and by the way, the reason for that upfront payment isn't that like they're pocketing a ton of money, but there is a, the, these mortgages are all federally guaranteed by the Federal, the, uh, federal Housing Administration. And so the Federal Housing Administration requires as a condition of that guarantee that there be this insurance plan that you're all paying into. And, and a lot of that payment is a payment into that big insurance plan. So anyway, um, uh, uh, other than that, you could just set up that line of credit and then borrow against it. But the nice part about the, 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 the reverse mortgage is that there are no monthly payments. Uh, the way they're structured, you can make a payment if you want. Uh, but if you don't, if you don't pay the interest that would have been due that month, that interest simply gets added in to the principal that is outstanding uh, and will get paid off eventually. The mortgage needs to get, will need to get paid off if you sell the property, just like the HELOC or any other mortgage, uh, or in this case, uh, I, up to, I, within a year of your death. So if you die, your kids are going to need to look at either selling the property in order to pay off the mortgage, or if they want to keep the property, they're going to need to refinance it just the way they would in the case of a HELOC. But the point is, it's, this is an alternative like the HELOC that you should investigate and then compare, compare which one you prefer. And then finally, there's a program called the Home Modification Loan Program, which is really a terrific program offered by the state. It's basically a reverse mortgage. Uh, you, you could get up to $50,000 uh, to do repairs, to take care of issues if you have a disability. It's typically 0% interest. The maximum income you can have to qualify is $190,000, so everybody's going to qualify. There are typically no monthly payments. It works a lot like a reverse mortgage that, that's due on, on death or, or sale. Finally, when you're thinking about other alternatives for paying for your care, remember, first of all, if you, if you need a lot of care at home, and either, the, either your doctor or a nurse or a social worker will certify that you need that care because you need this kind of assistance with the activities of daily living, it may very well that those payments to those care providers are gonna be tax deductible. That's especially important if, you're, if in this case, Frank is using some of that $200,000 in IRA money, because that means that effectively, he's, you're using pre-tax dollars to, to pay for things. Typically you look at IRA money and you say to yourself, well that's not really my money because before I can get any of it I have to pay the income tax on it. But if you're pulling it out in order to, to pay for a service that's tax deductible as a medical expense, then really you end up not um, paying any taxes on that money. Um, you can pay for, you, you, you may, you're going to want to look for, look to this program called ECOP. This is a state funded program it's not a mass health program, and therefore it's not asset based. You could qualify for that program simply based on your income. You will qualify if, like Frank and Mary, you're making $36,000 a year or less. You'll even qualify if you're making more than that, but there'd be a copay that, is, that, would, that you'd need to be paying. So when you're thinking about your future care, you may want to factor in this program. Um, there's long term care insurance. If Frank and Mary are still 70 or under, then it is likely that unless they have a serious physical problem right now, they'd be eligible for long-term care insurance. Long-term care insurance often is an ideal way to, take, to, to fill this gap, to insure against this risk of frailty by getting a policy that's going to pay, for example, $125 a day. $125 a day policy would cover all the care that we had talked about before. And oh, by the way, if you have that policy, and you then need to qualify for Mass Health, and you have your home. Your home, there, Mass Health will not put a lien on your home. Finally, uh, there is the larger program called the Frail Elder Waiver. This is a Mass Health-based program, and so it's asset-based. So you, you'd want to talk to your lawyer about this program uh, to see how you could restructure your assets to become eligible. The point is, hope is not a plan. If you're worried about this, and if you're getting to our age, you probably should be worried about this. If you're thinking about this, you should talk to a professional, make a budget, figure out how you would be paying for the care, 
And then at the end of the day, take a break, go out to eat, treat yourself. So thank you very much. I hope you've, you enjoyed the program. If you have any questions, call me anytime, 508-860-1470. Remember, the goal of life is to sleep well at night. Thank you very much.